All right then, lads, ladies, and those of us who know better. My name is Jackson MTT Kenny, and welcome back to Bold and Bright. Happy Pride Month! I am swamped at the minute. I've been doing a lot of stuff that takes up a lot of spoons. So you since we're getting a mini episode, but come on, it's the gay month. We're going to talk about gay shite today. And I guess what brought this on is a conversation that I had a while ago. Argument might be a better word for it. Where the person I was having the conversation with was talking about how no one likes being gay. Which is objectively untrue, because I fucking love being bent. <laughs> and I'm very privileged and lucky to be able to have that opinion, because being bent is not easy, being trans is not easy, falling anywhere on any of the queer spectrums is not easy. And I've known some people who, if you ask them, would you choose to be straight or cis, they'd say, yeah. As for me, I wouldn't. The trans thing is a little bit more up in the air because, obviously, I would like to have my dysphoria go away because that thing is such a nightmare. But what I mean by that is I want to go on testosterone and get top surgery. I don't want to be a cis man. I'm quite happy being trans. And I also want to mention that the way that I express myself is very camp. <laughs> I'm flamboyant. I'm dramatic. I, you know, I do the limp wrist thing at least once a day because that's what brings me joy. That gives me a little bit of self-expression and I know that, okay, yeah, this is good, this feels right. So I know that I fill quite a few cliches or even stereotypes. I love musical theatre, I love bright colours, I have pride flags on everything. <laughs> My favourite genre is queer hope punk romance. I'm up and I don't apologise for any of that, it makes me feel good. But something that I've noticed being this particular flamboyant flavour of queer is that there's an attitude that you can run into with the cishead aloes and also even other queer people that the best thing for us to do is to try to blend in with the normies. And that's not something I'm comfortable with. The flavor of homophobia that I've ran into most of, most of my life, never mind the stuff that comes through on the media or through the news or through random bloody nitwits on the internet, the flavor I've ran up against the most is... Okay, 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 okay. You can be a lesbian, but you can't tell anyone you're a lesbian. Thanks, Granny. And also, for the record, I'm not a lesbian. <laughs> Lesbians are great, but there's just the slight problem that I'm a man and I'm not exclusively attracted to women, which kind of... No, that's not quite how that works. And I bet that a lot of people who were giving me the nonsense about how, okay, you, but you need to blend in probably didn't even think they were being homophobic. They probably thought they were being perfectly reasonable and asking me to suppress my identity all the way down. It's also no coincidence that the people who tell me to tone down the queer also tell me to tone down the autism. Because we've got a big load of neurodivergence in this community as well, which is also great. I love being autistic. But the idea that I should be acting like a straight guy? Eh. Rubs me up the wrong way. Like, I love my Hawaiian shirt and my rainbow socks. I like wearing my trans bracelet and my ace ring. I like walking into a room and knowing that about 10 different people's gaydars just went off. And I'm using gay here very loosely. Technically, I'm panromantic. Demi panromantic at that. I don't define my queerness by my love life. I haven't been in a relationship for, I think, nearly a year at this point, And I'm not particularly inclined to get into one right now. But I know what my attraction is. And my attraction isn't straight. Ergo, gay. And... I feel like it's actually really insulting to say to a queer person that they should try to blend in more or you don't need to talk about it that much or we get it, you're gay, you don't need to remind us. Look, I have worked long and bloody hard for my identity. I came out as non-binary at 11, pan at like 13. I have flip-flopped through a whole bunch of different identities, had a lot of existential crises and dealt with a whole bucket of mental health issues that, yes, the queerness contributed to. Not because queer automatically means depressed, but because living in a world that doesn't automatically accept you is really hard. As my relatives, I've got, like, my parents and an auntie, and that is basically it in terms of who's actually supporting me. So to tell me that the queerness is something that I should cover up, there's a reason we call our main celebration Pride, because we work for this shite, so damn it, we're going to enjoy it. We're not going to put up with bloody homophobia all 12 months of the year, only to have someone tell us, Oh, but you have all your rights now, you can get married in a couple countries, what are you even complaining about anymore? Yeah, we don't listen to that whining in this house. 
growing up in the environment that I did, I got preached a lot of stuff about civility politics and how you can't expect to change people's minds if you're being so uncouth all the time. Yeah, fact that. If you're calling for our extermination or for just, or for us to have no rights, let the trans people pee where they want to and go to what sports they want to. This should not be a debate. My right to exist and to do what I wish should not be up for debate. Unfortunately, it is, and that is a whole bucket that I don't want to get into on the on the episode where I'm specifically talking about how much I love being queer, but the fact of the matter is that we fight for our queerness. And I know that not all queer people have the same belief as me. There are probably people who were turned off this video in the first place because they, do, because they don't like the word queer. I love it. I like reclaiming words. But even I have my boundaries. As an autistic person, I don't like the R word whatsoever. I've just heard it too often. But I will gladly call myself queer, a tranny, or a fag. Because to quote Gloria Gaynor, I am what I am. <laughs> and I guess my final point in what is meant to be a mini video, so it's easier to edit, is that, remember how I mentioned that flavor of homophobia where they just told me to tone it down? I also got a lot of, no, 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 don't worry, you're normal. I mean... Like, what, I'm normal except for one weird little urge I've got rattling around my head? Yeah, no. I am not normal. I don't fit into the majority. I'm not cishet aloe. I'm not, I'm not monogamous. I don't believe in a lot of... I don't believe in a lot of the other shite that I've experienced just in my general area. And I'm quite happy being gay. I don't want to change that. And next year I'm hoping to do a ton more stuff for Pride, but this year I'm run off my feet, so this is all you're going to be getting besides some probably very camp art going up on the Tumblr, but I'm glad for what little bit we can get. If you had told me 10 years ago that I'd be sitting here talking about queerness, I would have gone, what? And also, what the flip is asexual? <laughs> I've already covered asexuality. I could probably cover a whole ton more, but I really am trying to make this easy to edit, so outro! <laughs> As I mentioned, you can find me on Tumblr. I'm at Blue, Bold, and Bright, or Jackson MTT Canny. Been really into patches and badges recently, which is mostly what's flooding the Tumblr. Uh, after this episode, Bold and Bright will be going on a wee break so I can get the stuff I need to get done done. But it's only going to be for a couple weeks, and I'll be seeing you again after that. So, if that's everything, my name is Jackson MTT Canny, and this has been Bold and Bright. <laughs>